Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time, Part 62. All clips in this episode are taken from a video series that are made in 2022, called Repairing a 2-inch Scale Foul Attraction Engine. And the series runs for a total of 12 episodes. In my opinion, it is well worth a watch. But then again, of course, I would say that, but it's the truth. My main career was as a musician running my own recording studio, which is still in use today, and it is very state-of-the-art. The recording studio was quite successful, and at one time I employed someone to run it. In the past I've repaired Hammond organs and I've been a computer engineer. These days I make a living by repairing things and videoing the process. I've always liked fault-finding, and when I think about it, that's probably why I've had two wives and two divorces. Anyway, I digress, back to this particular job. This two-inch scale foul attraction engine originally was beautifully made, but now it's in a bit of a sorry state, with quite a lot of wear and bodge jobs. What I'm showing in this video are top tips when you look at an engine for the first time to find out what's wrong with it before you rush in, quote a customer, and then find lots of problems that you hadn't quoted for but are expected to repair. There is a lot wrong with this particular traction engine. Here's a bit of advice. Look before you leap, an initial inspection. Prior to starting work on any repairs, always look for potential serious problems before you start. If necessary, make a list of all the jobs that are required to assess how long it will take to rectify them properly. Time to get on with the job. The engine's very good looking. There are one or two things amiss with it though. If you look at this, it's the governor that sits on top of the block. And someone has secured the gear to the shaft with a rather large screw which stops the shaft from rotating. This is not a big problem because I'm not going to connect up the governor. Time to check out the mechanical aspect of the engine. I can immediately see a couple of problems. The valve fork on the valve rod is loose. In this close-up you can see that it's moving around and it shouldn't be. And also, in common with most traction engines, including my large 4.5-inch scale one, the expansion link touches the top of the boiler when it's in the lowest position. I removed the cover from the end of the flywheel to see what was going on, because the flywheel was sliding back and forth on the crankshaft. In fact, the entire crankshaft had a lot of movement in this direction, which is not good. But once I fix the flywheel problem, this side play should disappear. That's job one, sort the flywheel and crankshaft out. And here's another job that's going to take quite a bit of fixing. This part is called the crosshead, which connects the small end of the connecting rod to the piston rod. And this needs to be held firmly between two guides, which are called crosshead guides. But this is not very firm at the moment. This crosshead design uses what are known as slippers. And the good thing about using crosshead slippers is the crosshead itself doesn't wear. All you do after a while, when the whole thing gets worn like this, is remove the slippers, make some new ones a little bit bigger, and then refit them. There's quite a lot of play in the crosshead pin, but this is worse. Look at the amount of play in the piston, what is going on here? Once I've made new slippers for the crosshead, I would think it would be a good idea to make a new gland from some phosphor bronze to support the piston and hold it in the right position. Before I start running the engine, this is a safety precaution, and I always do this when I'm working on traction engines. I'm using an old piece of wood, which is a great test for this scroll saw that I bought. It's really making short work of cutting it. Then I screwed the two pieces of wood onto the bench. This one, nearest me, is near the edge of the bench, but the piece at the front is not at the edge of the bench, it's nearer to the traction engine. This is just a precaution to stop the engine from rolling off the bench. It would roll off the bench if it was in gear. It would just climb over these pieces of wood, but that is not the issue. It's just a safety precaution. Here I've applied the brake. This makes it difficult to move the engine on the bench, so it should be OK. And to put the engine in gear, there is a locking pin that needs to be removed, so it's quite safe now. The first thing the owner asked me to do was to replace the blowdown valve on the boiler, and this was done by replacing the original difficult to get to and damaged blowdown valve with a commercial steam tap. I was also told that the injector didn't work and just leaked water permanently from the tank. This injector water valve is no good at all. 
I can see that it's been crudely soft-soldered, and the shaft that goes into it is very rusty. I intend to make a new fitting to allow me to use a commercial water valve. This could prove to be a tricky job, time will tell. The list of small problems was mounting. Sean also said that the top of the water gauge dribbled. Well, I'm not too worried about that. But then he mentioned there was a bit of a dribble from underneath these two taps, and when I look how slack the left-hand one is, I'm not surprised. The only problem is, to remove this tap entirely, I do have to move quite a few parts of the engine. That, of course, can be a problem, because it's very easy to create more problems as you start the job. Time to test the regulator, and I need some compressed air for this. With the regulator fully closed, there's a bit of a hissing noise going on, but the flywheel is not rotating. Once I open the regulator and move the flywheel, it immediately bursts into life. And it actually sounds slightly better than I was anticipating. Before running the engine for an extended period, I think it's a good idea to oil everything. And by the way, I'm using steam oil. I'm trying to do a little bit of gap filling. This should make the engine run slightly more quietly. Only the very worn or incorrectly fitted parts should make a noise. I'm sure that as this repair job progresses, I'll find other things wrong with the engine that I will put right. It's somewhat of a bonus, really, because if there was nothing wrong with the engine, there wouldn't be a video. As you can hear, the steam oil is doing its stuff, and there's not quite as much knocking going on. I feel that I must mention at this stage, though, that that is not the repair. Here, I'm using a life centre from one of my lathes to apply some pressure on the end of the crankshaft to stop it from moving from side to side, but it doesn't make much difference. The valve timing is not too bad in both directions. If anything, it's just very, very slightly retarded, but that's quite useful for certain applications. The first repair job will be on the end of the crankshaft and the flywheel. This is a bit of a mess. The key's not right. I don't know how you're supposed to remove this. There's a very badly damaged taper pin that's been hammered into position. This, I suppose, is OK to stop the flywheel from falling off the crankshaft, but it's not a good solution. Before I finish this job, I will refit a taper pin that isn't quite as mashed up. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.